and the bakery, we try to um, use this sort of easy, approachable practice in which um, at least 20% of the flour content in every recipe we make, savory and sweet, that has flour or grains has to be whole grain. Um, and what we noticed, that was like kind of like my goal, like on day one. And what we notice is that as time has progressed, that we're using more and more whole grains. So that actually there's very, very few recipes that have only 20%. Um, but for example, um, this muffin I love because like it's 100% spelt. Uh, it's super easy to make. And you know, um, many of us consider spelt, um, I call it the gateway grain. Cause like a lot of people that have not fully uh, um, dived into whole grains. This is like the one flour that is easy to translate. We can say, I, I call it an all-purpose flour because it really is an all-purpose flour. Um, and just full of flavor and great texture. And it gives you this browns and this mahogany that um, just super beautiful, uh, very, very uh, versatile and easy to use. Um, so yeah, that's what we do here. And um, this is just one example um and mother grains the cookbook that's i wrote and it's coming up next year um reflects that philosophy um i i really hope people can do that and follow that very easy transition into more whole grains yeah that that those sound and look so good um Tell, yeah, they smell good yeah <laughs> i'm sure tell us a little bit so i think that lots of people um you know, have, have an interest or a curiosity about whole grains. Um, mm -hmm, and they're, mm -hmm. they're maybe like a little intimidated to, to try them out. Could you talk a little bit about, um, about your experience using whole grains in your recipes and what are some of the ways that you mm -hmm. uh, adapt and listen to the whole grains in order to coax the most potential out of them? Totally. So, you know, um, I think that the one great way to look at whole grains, uh, starting with, you know, wheat or any other really, but um, wheat because it's the one that we use the most in baking, right? Um, I, I always say that every baker has a different journey into the whole grain world. Like not two bakers have the same path. Um, it usually starts with like you go to the store or you go to the farmer's market and you're introduced to this one generally it's a single origin kind of wheat or uh, it could be a corn or a cornmeal made out of it um, and what you might want to do like the first step step one will be substitute in a recipe that flour for um, a percentage of the white refined flour in your recipe uh, interestingly enough um, my first step when i started baking with whole grains was, was chocolate chip cookies and sherbet cookies first because like well sherbet is amazing because it gives you so much information right it, it will tell you uh how the flour tastes it will tell you how it reacts to fat because there's a, a, a good amount of um uh, butter in a uh, sherbet recipe it will also tell you how it bakes like does it brown quickly does it is it not so or not so much um or is it very thirsty right sometimes like you'll feel like the texture in the is the dough crumbly or is it does it roll out nice um also the chocolate chip cookies i do i make because i like them everybody wants to try them and then you can use other people's guinea pigs for information and say like hey what do you think um it also gives you a little bit of like how the uh, a little bit of information about how does this flour pair with other um other with chocolate or other flavors in this case chocolate right um, so it'd be like, oh, you know what? Buckwheat and chocolate are interesting together. Or rye and chocolate are very, very elegant together. Or caramel and chocolate, not great together, you know? So it's just that um, it, the experimentation is always fun. Um, and if you're really, really brave, you can substitute the entire amount of flour, 100% of the flour. Um, if, if that was the case, um, I would recommend to use things that are similar to all-purpose flour, which is how most recipes are written for us home bakers. At, uh, um, and I would say uh, choose wheat um, or spelt, you know, which is a relative of wheat, because um, they will have like that tricky gluten that makes baked goods happen. Yeah, so when you say if you're, uh, if you're brave, because I'm sure we have some, some brave souls on here, 
Um, right. What, what do um what what is what is the risk or like what what are some of the reasons why um why it won't work or or what what, what will go right. wrong if you go whole you know all the way. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. So one thing that we know about um, uh, whole grains, right, is that they tend to be a little bit thirstier. They're also most likely they are milled in a smaller facility or milled by yourself at home, which means that the grind may not be uh, super fine. I have the good fortune of working with an amazing miller here in Los Angeles. Um, it's called Kristen Toll, and her grind are just like beautiful, poetic. Like I could not, I, if I start talking about it, I will never end. Um, but at home, we might just put it in our own Como mill, right? Or, or buy it at a farmer's market where the grind is a little bit more rustic, a little coarser. So we're just, we just have to anticipate you might need to increase the hydration. And when I say hydration, I mean buttermilk or, or apple juice or even water, milk, you know, whatever it is that we're using. It may also help to increase the amount of butter and sometimes the amount of eggs, especially the yolk, because whole grain in general, uh, loves fat, like the addition of fat in recipes. And as we know, yolks contain the most fat in the egg. Um, so that's really it. Um, one thing that I know, noticed myself doing, I, did, I wasn't very aware of it until I caught myself, is sometimes I'll, I'll measure, like let's say that we're making a cake and the entire amount of uh, flour in the recipe is two and a half and a quarter cups of flour, which is about, I think it's about 12 ounces of flour. What I will do is I will um, kind of reserve like almost all the, like uh, reserve a teeny bit of the flour. So you add almost all of it. See how the batter looks. Is it really tight? Is it, um, uh, uh, does it need um, more? Does it, is it loose, you know, and adjust uh, accordingly. So this is what I love about whole grains is that you are an engaged baker. You are an active participant. You're just not following instructions like a robot. Your eye, all your senses are in there. Um, and that makes it really fun. I, it has made me so a much better ba baker to like have all this neat array of ingredients that uh, um, are such complete and beautiful food. It definitely has made me better at my, at my craft. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that, you know, jumped out uh, at me uh, during the very fortunate experience of, of getting to look at your book is, you know, you have, you, you have all of these different recipes where you use all of these different grains, which is really, um, it's kind of obvious in hindsight, you know, now that you've created that, but it's really uh, unusual for mm -hmm. a baking book to alter that fundamental ingredient, right? We're, we're really used to lots of different recipes altering all of the other things, you know, the inclusions, the right. fruits, the fats, the liquids, all of that stuff, but uh, rarely are we really playing with the grains. And so I think it's really incredible, your contribution there. But I think that that's a really good rule of thumb that you just laid out there for folks who are starting to work with whole grains is because they are often more thirsty just to reserve a little bit of the flour and you leave everything else in the recipe the same and you can see the same yeah yeah um could you talk and, uh, you know you know what you you work a lot with whole grains yourself like you know you know you know it's incredible instant gratification so even that even a little, little bit of experimentation even if it poses a little bit of risk that your cake won't be exactly what you dreamed or exactly how you hope um, that's that discovery is gratifying in itself. Absolutely. Yeah. And in the grand scheme of things, right. I mean, it's one thing to change a, a, a recipe for a hundred loaves of bread to change the flour and just right. see how it goes. Right. It's another thing to be doing, doing experiments on the side and uh, really kind of forging in into the unknown here, which um, it, it's, it's incredibly gratifying and exciting. Um, Cause we just got a few more minutes. 100%. If you could tell folks a little bit about um, your bakery restaurant in LA, how you how you came to be, um, and how how you all do things mm -hmm. there. So let's see. Um, uh, this uh, so for, friends and family. We're located in East Hollywood. Um, I was a pastry chef um, at restaurants for like fifteen years, and. Um, about five years ago, um, I decided to take a break and I thought our next step, I discussed it with my husband who is also a chef and we, we thought that our next step should be 
uh, a place that we where would work during the daytime, not a not a restaurant. We would close at one in the morning, and um, little did I know I would be waking up at one in the morning <laughs> instead. Um, and we decided to open a bakery. I was um, getting really good at baking bread at home. Um, I had done a little bit of that in, in a restaurant, but this is the one place where I bought my first deck oven. Um, we found an old Armenian bakery. We rehabbed it, opened friends and family. We we're very east side, which if you're familiar with LA, that means that is not quite the affluent west side. And that's, that has been important to me to serve the community. I live just a few minutes from here too. Um, and we are super grain centric. This is California. We have an incredible farmer's market. So we do incorporate a lot of, of produce in our in our repertoire. Um, we're super casual and we have been surprisingly doing a good job during the pandemic. Uh, we were keeping all our stuff safe and uh, our customers um, are quarantining at home and working from home. So, so we feed them quite often. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so I'm so I mean, I'm so glad that you all are doing doing okay through this through this time. It's um Yeah, very it's been, grateful. It's been, yeah, it's been scary and uncertain for sure. Um okay, we got two minutes left. Um do you have any any words of wisdom for the hundred plus folks who are who are spending time with us here and or requests to make of, of them? I would say th this is a uh, thank you so much for having me. I love that I was the first one. Um, I love that I got to show you some muffins. The one thing I would say, this is a, a very cool thing that I learned from a mentor of mine in the grain of whole, whole, whole grains that uh, her name is Nan Kohler and you'll hear from her in a few hours. Um, think of wheat as wine, the way we think about grapes uh, or think of grains in general, not just wheat. Like you are get, gonna get acquainted with different varietals and every batch is gonna be special in, 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 in its own. Like think of eight and every grain grown in a certain place and time as a, a product that has a sense of terroir. Like it belongs to a geographical and, and a chronological place. Beautifully said. Couldn't say it better myself. Thank you so much, Roxana. And- um... Thank you. I uh, I hope I hope you enjoy those muffins. Thank you. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Okay, and uh, right on time, we say goodbye to Roxana, and we say hello to the one and bye, Roxana. Uh, we say hello to the one and only, the woman, the myth, the legend, Monica Spiller. <laughs> of the whole grain connection. I can tell all of you out there are screaming with excitement and approval. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet Monica about a decade ago as well. Uh, I was uh, baking bread in San Francisco at... Um... Oh, Roxana, turn off your microphone. <laughs> there you go. Um, I was baking bread at Mission Pie in San Francisco and the owners there, um, I started to get into whole grains and they said, well, if you're in, into whole grains, you should definitely reach out to Monica Spiller. And so uh, I reached out to her and she was incredibly kind and generous. And she said, well, yeah, why don't you come down to my house and we can talk about this stuff. And so I rode my bike down there and she welcomed me into her home as generous people did before we were living in a pandemic. And uh, she shared her her sourdough, her bar, barm, barm bread, I believe, barm bread with me. Um, and Monica has been an advocate for decades for whole grains here in California, and she's nationally recognized for the work she's done. And um, we're all very privileged to get to spend a little bit of time with her here today. Monica, are you there? Josie, for goodness sake, that's very generous of you. <laughs> Thank You're you. very generous. <laughs> So oh, thank you. So um, are you going to ask me a question or shall I just dive in? Well, <laughs> just dive in. Let it rip, Monica. <laughs> well, I always want to tell people why I've gained such strong conviction. Yes, uh, we would, we would love to hear that. What, what, what is it that has 
uh, driven you over the years? Because I mean, you you've been at this for for a while, and um, clearly My, you're incredibly passionate about it. Right, 1975 was when I had this awakening. I wow, was so working in a pharmaceutical company, and they had a lecture going and I said okay <clears throat> the whole company went actually to this lecture and it was by two physicians who had been working in Africa in uh, missionary hospitals for the previous <clears throat> 30 or 40 years so that you know that's taking it back to the, the 40s 50s 60s and during that time <clears throat> they noticed that the native people just never had things like diabetes or cardiovascular disease or colon cancer. <clears throat> they just didn't think, you know, they just never saw those cases from among the country people. But the same kind of people who were living in the city, they contracted these diseases. And these two physicians, um, Dennis Burkitt, he's, he's famous among physicians, and uh, Hugh Trowell, um, <clears throat> between them, they said, well, what's going on? You know, they say they're the same race. Um, in one set of conditions, they're, they never have these diseases, and in the other, they do. So... They looked at, they were observant of the diet and they realized that the people who lived in the cities were eating white flour, white flour bread, white flour cookies, white flour pastries, whatever. Everything was white flour. And they put two and two together and said, okay, there's some, the, there's something missing in that flower. And of course, the bran and germ are missing. And uh, they didn't know quite what, how to describe it because there was more to it than that. There, there were more uh, vegetables being eaten by the, um, by the, the country people. So they coined the name dietary fiber. These are the people who coined the name dietary fiber and it's given us a handle to describe what's going on ever since then. So, and that situation actually is still in, in place today. In Africa today, just, I read an article just uh, a week or so ago, Africa has much lower rates of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And lo and behold, that they're the countries in Africa that are not having these overwhelming cases of um, severe COVID that we're having in the, in the Western world, in the developed world. And uh, there's the story all over again that we could be preventing so much diabetes and heart disease if we were eating whole grains. Anyway, this was a powerful story for me. And uh, I, that, on that day, I said, well, well, you know, what's going on? Why, why on earth are we doing this? Why, why don't we have whole grains, whole grain foods? whole grain bread and uh, so I've pursued that um, just lately I've realized that I was thinking about this just on Sunday and uh, I was reading the story about Marie Antoinette she's not as bad a person as apparently she was once thought to be but <clears throat> she's supposed to have coined this or <clears throat> said this in com conversation um you know let them let those peasants who are clamoring for bread let them eat cake but <clears throat> it's made me realize that ever since the french revolution that was you know the mid 19 excuse me the, the mid 1700s 
that was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, or, you know, sort of that, that time frame. It's a little before that. Um, but we've, the bakers and the millers between them have actually been producing better and better cake. If you think about it, instead of bread. Bread should be a basic thing with the whole grain and the cake, something without the whole grain, you know, something, um, a delicate thing that you might have on the side. But instead we've switched to eating cake and we've got better and better at it. Wonder Bread was perhaps the ultimate cake. So <clears throat> anyway, um, you're not interrupting me or asking me any questions. I'm happy. Can... I'm, I'm happy to, but I don't want to derail you. You're doing great without me saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll go further and say um, I'll give more of my journey. Um, the first thing I looked at, I I've, I've abbreviate, have to abbreviate this a little bit after all. Um, the first thing I thought was, well, we've forgotten how to make bread. So I, that was how I realized that the English name for a sourdough is barm. So it's just a sourdough. It's, it's, barm is no different to a French sourdough or an Italian sourdough or a whatever. Um, except the English did seem to add malt to their sourdough. <clears throat> anyway, I studied that. Um, and then I realized, well, there's more to it than um, the leavening, is the wheat. And so I studied the wheat. I didn't know, it. I was clueless at the beginning. I had no idea of how to grow wheat or anything. I mean, I, I, I had some idea. I'd seen wheat fields after all, but, um, Anyway, um, watching the time, it's going by. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I, I looked at the wheat itself and uh, then finally I, I started the nonprofit Whole Grain Connection to... Um, <clears throat> when, when was this? When in time was this? Um, I, that was about 2000. But I see the time disappearing and I want to show you something. Please, show us. I want to show you my sourdough starter. Great. I just keep this in the refrigerator. Yeah. And when I want to make a bread, I take Open a... Open it up. Let's I see take it. a, It's not fizzy. It's not bubbling or anything. I let it ferment until it stops bubbling. And it's quite, quite smooth and runny. Hold it up. We can't see it. Sorry. Yeah. And so what kind of flour do you have in there? This particular one is Sonora flour. Yeah, and it doesn't, doesn't separate out. If you use um, red wheat, you get a separation of a liquid layer. It's just a difference in character of the, of the um, <clears throat> wheat itself. But uh, with the Sonora, it's light in color. I, though, I don't know. Yeah, we can see that. Can really yeah. see it very well. Yeah, yeah. But it's Creepy. light in color. It's not dark like it is from a red, a red wheat. But anyway, that's that's enough to make two loaves. It's it's a half a cup. I could make two loaves. I could actually expand that to making four loaves. You don't, but uh, you take a generous spoonful and put it into the mix of your flour and water and salt and let it rise. I figured it had to be as easy as using regular yeast. Why not? And I love that's, it. What, that's what this is. You prepare this just by mixing flour and water and a smidgen, you know, just a small spoonful. Um, you'd mix that together and then leave it to ferment until it just doesn't do anything anymore. If you put it away in the refrigerator before it's ready, you'll get it bubbling out of the jar. <clears throat> Here, I made this on Monday, 
and I put it, I made it in a very warm condition, 86 degrees or 30 degrees centigrade. And uh, it took um, a day and a half to get to this point. If you were working at uh, 68 degrees or 20 degrees centigrade, it would take um, three, two to three times that, two to three days, three days, four days out at room temperature. And you can make it completely predictable by taking it all the way to the end like this. It means it's saturated in microorganisms, really. And hey Monica, that, how, how long have you had, we got a question from, uh, from one of the participants here, Michelle McKinnon. Uh, we got a few questions, but she's wondering how, how old your culture is. And then uh, David Keisel uh, was wondering if you could mention the value of the diversity of yeasts in sourdough versus brewer's yeast. We've got, uh, we've got two minutes left to go, if you want to answer those or if you have something else that you'd um, like to include. Well, I wanted to mention the difference in the effect of temperature. We've said that. Um, and just about what, what, what are some of the benefits of, of sourdough versus, uh, you know, commercial yeast? I think that's a, that's a more worthwhile question, actually, for the moment. Right. Um, the thing is that uh, you do have fiber in the, in the, um, in the whole grain. And the effect of the sourdough is to utilize those parts of the fiber, especially the um, pentazans. That's um, like a, it can be turned into a soluble fiber. And when it's a soluble fiber, that means the microorganisms can use it. And so that changes the texture of the bread. Um, what else? Um, and then the major thing that everybody worries about for not really a very good reason is the, uh, are the phytates. And the phytates are thought to be evil, but they're actually wonderful things that prevent cancer. And they contain phosphorus. I see my time's up. I've got to stop. <laughs> um, I have to stop to let you go on to the next person. But anyway, phytates are made available. So Monica, thank you, Josie. Oh uh, my goodness, thank you so much. And um, you know, for folks out there who are interested in learning more about um, your perspective on all these things, which is invaluable, uh, Monica's organization is called Whole Grain Connection, and they can find you on the web. Is that right, Monica? Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Monica, for everything. Thank you. Um, okay, and look at us right on time, 9.30 a.m. Harmony Sage is next up. Uh, Harmony is zooming in from the uh, Southern California. Her business is called the Long Beach Beer and Bread Lab. Are you there, Harmony? How are you guys? We're doing great. We're very excited to... Uh, spend a little time with you. There you are. Yes. So I'm here at the Beer and Bread Lab in Long Beach, California. I, um, I wanted to talk today a little bit about the savory stones that we make um, because we make it with two different types of whole grains. So um, if, if, if you want me to go through that first or another introduction. Yeah, no, would love, would love to, love to do that. I mean, I think you know, maybe just tell us a little bit about um, how long have you have you been running the Long Beach Beer and Bread Lab, and what is you know the basic concept? So, so we opened in, or I think we started building out in February two thousand and sixteen. My husband and I wanted to open this business where a, a green based business um, where we share yeast and cultures between the beer and bread. And really, our businesses have fed each other kind of literally and economically, um, especially right now in the pandemic, and a lot of uh, people are allowed to open because they serve beer. We, we became 
you know, more of a full fledged bakery where you can get a first half when you when you meet with your attention. So um, we started our Sourdough culture around the same time uh, from some local rains and also uh, from the skin scrapes that were growing in our backyard. So that's Sourdough culture we used. Um, uh, my background is pastry, so I, I do a lot of pastry, a lot of bread, I do, I do everything so that you can, you know, put on good nutritious stuff and, and bring it Harmony, could Harmony, I, could I interrupt you for just one second? I think that uh, the audio is a little choppy on, on our end. Do you know if there's anything that you might be able to do to address that? Um, the audio is a little choppy. Um, it's I'm sort of not sure. pix it's pixelated. <laughs> it sounds like a video game a little bit. Um, no. Um, <laughs> the audio is choppy. We we can I mean if we can't improve it, it's you know, we, we can hear you. Um it just I, I don't know if there's something that you could try to try to improve. Um yeah. I'm, you, I'm you not, maybe try I'm not the Sure. Maybe if you have like headphones, you could try putting in headphones. No headphones. Yeah, just try it. Yeah, try them. Is there another, um, so we're hearing, is there another computer in the room? Yeah, there's a second computer. We're just having issues with the camera. That's why we switched to this computer. Um, is, yeah, the other, is the other computer connected to? Um, we're going to try it right now. You could just try leaving it. I'm just saying what, what our, what our participants are. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to leave it, leave it in somewhere else. Yeah, leave it and reconnect. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess now it's my time to uh, do my dance performance, which I've been doing for uh, for a few months in preparation for this very moment. So um, here we go. I hope everyone's ready for my dance to begin. Oh, there's harmony. Oops, Hi. sorry folks. No, I can't hear them. That's better. Is that better? Yeah. Yay. Nice job. Oh, no. All right. Let's get right, right. into it. People right. are well, I'll do the dance okay. later, folks. Don't worry. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. It's fine. Okay. So so I love, I just want to say, I think it's so cool that you have a bakery and bread lab and you're doing all of this cross pollen poly yeah. Pollinization? Pollis pollinization? Yeah, totally. Beautiful. So I have you some of um, this right here is um, Rouge de Bordeaux. It's one of my favorite grains that um, to hatch me grain project grows. I try to get, whenever they have it, I try to get it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's uh, in, in my recipe today. The rouge we we mill in house. We actually have a Meadows mill from um, a family that we were really close to, um, who lives in Israel. They brought this ten-inch Meadows mill to Israel with them because they were going to open a pizza shop, um, and then it didn't work out. So then, growing up, we just saw this mill in their house that was a hat rack for years and years. And when my husband and I decided to move back to California from Israel, we asked them, hey, can we bring the hat rack? Cause we'll actually use it. Um, and that's what we use now to mill our own grain. Oh my God, I um, love that. So yeah, so this is, I don't know if you can see the milled flour. Ours is, a, I, I mill it a little coarser. And then this is the Yakora from Central Milling and it's, a lot finer. Um, and so how I do you can, use those? So you use the Rouge de Bordeaux and the Yakora Rojo. What are the different recipes or applications for those flowers? 
I mean, I love to use Yakora also in my sourdough breads because it's a super thirsty grain and I can just hydrate it as much as I want. Um, the rouge I like to use more in my pastry. Uh, high doughs, it's, it's just so beautiful and it's so flavorful. So I really love that as well. Um, let, me, let me share the screen with you and just show, um, show this recipe really quick. So this is, um, this is the recipe for the scones. Um, I use half yakora and half rouge. Um, this is all of the, oop, let's go back. That's, oh no. See, I'm not good at this PowerPoint. This is all the ingredients weighed out. Whenever I make pastry, I like to cube my butter super small and you'll see why in a second. Um, so this, this particular scone is a savory scone um, with pumpkin and caramelized onions. Um, it's my mentor's recipe, but just uh, changed a little bit because in his recipe, there is white flour, um, bacon, <laughs> and a lot more liquid. But I'm a vegetarian and I like to use whole grains, so that's why uh, it's a little, I, I changed the recipe a bit. Um, but James Sadoway, my mentor, is extremely talented uh, pastry chef, and I, lo I love changing his, all his recipes to have whole grains in them. Uh, so this is after the butter is kind of incorporated into the flour. Uh, it should look like sand. I, I made it like a little video. Um, let me, oh no, we don't want the sound. See, it should be like really sand, like all the butter should have kissed each uh, piece of grain. When you clump it, it should clump together, but then fall apart because this is before we added any of the liquid. Oh, no, next slide. Oh, there. Then I dump it all out onto the flat, onto the space, roll it out. Uh, I kind of treat my scones and biscuits like a croissant dough and I do a fold uh on the on the scone so i do this twice just a single fold and that kind of creates a little bit of height in the in the dough and then i cut it into nice little triangles and that that is uh that's my scones and i have i have a, a finished product right here <laughs> Delicious looking, my God. Yeah, we can even open it up. Ooh. If you can see, oh. the cheese is like sticking it together, but yeah. it's really nice. It's like soft yet flaky, and we have like the nice caramelized onion. I'll, I'll eat that when we're done here. And so how did you have to, you know, as you made the, so you, you got the base initial recipe from your mentor, and then you evolved it to include 100% whole grain, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I mean, so it's literally half the amount of liquid that I add into the, the recipe now than when it was 100% white flour recipe. Um, and Wait, it's, so it's, you use less liquid? I use less liquid. That's and I think that's because of the rouge and also because I, I, I grind it coarser. Um, so it's not absorbing as much liquid, yep. um, but it it also gives it that nice like delicate flavor and and nice mouth feel. I mean, I know like in beer we talk about mouth feel all the time, but it's in bread it's definitely um, it's a thing also. So yeah, so I think that, that that's a really good case in point. You know that because um, with um with Roxana, we were talking about how often whole grains are considerably thirstier than sifted flours. Um, but I think the, 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 a more sort of global rule of thumb is that when working with single varietal flours of any kind, but this is, we we're talking primarily whole grain. A hundred percent. And it really depends on the grain. Uh, it depends on that year's crop as well. Uh, if you can get all of your falling numbers and, and all your statistics from your farmer um, or your miller, then that's great. You can't always get them. So, so then you just experiment and you, 
uh, you try the recipe again and again until it, it looks the way you want it to look and tastes the way you want it to taste. Um, and, and definitely the, I have some whole grain varietals that in my mind are more reliable than others. And I just decide to highlight them differently because they all have their unique flavors and colors and, and just really positive things that they can add to your, to your recipes. So I, I definitely suggest to everyone to, to get in there and start experimenting because there's, there's so many great things to try. Awesome. Yeah. We've got we got two minutes left here. Oh wow! Um, I know it's flying by. Did, did you um, did you have did you have another recipe that you you wanted to share or? Um no that that is that is it for now. Just the Great. scones. I mean I have a ton of recipes. So if so tell, if, tell, if well, anybody if anybody ever wants you know some tips or tricks or so I I definitely share recipes. I was always taught that. You know, if, if you if you have the knowledge, you share it with others. Um, there's there's no secrets here. If, if people want to ask questions or get recipes or come see what we're doing, then you know we welcome everyone to come. That's beautiful. The the generosity of bakers is unparalleled. Yeah, it's awesome. I Roxana helped me a lot actually when I uh, started my pastry program here. She let me come in, see all her secrets, uh, ask her ten million questions. So I definitely, you know, opened my doors to to others to do that as well. That's beautiful. Um, is there any um, advice or requests that you have for uh, any of the one hundred and forty one people around the world who are with us here? Uh, just keep supporting your local farmers, your local millers, you know, um, we mill in house, but we also buy from from more experienced millers and uh, that that is what that's what's going to keep our grain economy going and our local food economy going uh, just to support support local. I mean, I'm all about that. We really saw it at the beginning of the pandemic and unfortunately now as well that you go into the supermarkets and there's nothing but we have urban farmers and we have local california farmers that that aren't making money right now so go directly to them and and buy because those are the people who are going to be there for you when you're hungry so be there for for them very well said, Harmony. Well, thank you. Thank you for spending uh, time with us this morning and sharing a little bit of what you do. Really thank appreciate you so much. it. Yeah. Awesome. Bye, guys. And uh, like that, we're on to presenter number four of the day, the one and only <laughs> Alina Janes, uh, who is coming into us also from, from Southern California, from Carlsbad. She runs a cottage bakery from her home. With the help of her two children, I believe. Yes, two toddlers. <laughs> and I think I'm excited to uh, hear what you have to share with us today. I think that um, we're we, we've got some some ancient grain breads, um, at least one that um, that I think you might be sharing some tidbits about. <laughs> yeah. Um, where do you want to start? Can you guys hear me okay? Are we good? We're good to go? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Looks great. Sounds great. Awesome. Uh, so are, you, are you in your, you're in your, your home bakery right now? I sure am. You know, I, uh, pre-pandemic, I was looking for a spot and of course everything shut down. So we just took my daughter's room and outfitted it to a bakery. <laughs> Super fun. Putting it lines for the Rothko and my mixer but yeah wow. so it's pretty it's pretty interesting <laughs> industrious I love it yeah and so what is your tell us a little bit about what your what your production is like um what your uh your menu is like how you incorporate whole grains into what you do um so just for a little bit of background, I am actually, I feel like a baby baker. I started this not even a year ago. I um, was in marketing and design for the last 15 years. Um, I did work in for a restaurant group for about four or five years. So I kind of learned about it, but um, 
this is all super new for me. I um, just started making bread out of nowhere and got obsessed with it and then uh, thought I might take it further. And when the pandemic, the shutdown happened again, you know, um, like Harmony was saying, there was no grain to be found anywhere. I started looking online and asking every person on Instagram and doing some research and I found Claudia and would not leave her alone. I, I would just, you know, email her questions. We'd have phone calls. She was so gracious with her time and um, her information and kind of just figured out, you know, of all of the quirky little nuances in our industry. So um, with that, I started to connect with my customers and I have, you know, a weekly pickup and delivery service. But really, I think what drives me is learning about the grains and um, connecting with the industry in a way that, you know, my customers haven't had any sort of digestive issues and um, really putting health and uh, all of that first. So my focus is on the ingredients and uh, that's kind of what drives me. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think as, as uh, you know, as it seems like as time goes on, more and more people are uh, interested, uh, open to and enjoying whole grains um, for the myriad benefits they provide. Um, so what are, uh, what are some of the ways that you incorporate whole grains into your baked goods? Um, I try to use whole grains in all of my uh, recipes. Um, mainly I focus on bread, everyday breads. I think because, you know, flour has been, it's the most widely consumed. It's in every packaged good. Um, and, you know, a lot of the reason why we're so sick is everything's filled with preservatives and pesticides and whatnot. So why not take the most basic staple that we eat every day and actually make it good for you? Um, I love the whole process of, you know, fermentation and working with new types of grains and the smells. It's almost like wine. I like to get to know new grains and experiment with it. Um, I feel really connected with my, um, my outer group, my customers. I like to disclose a lot of information. I feel like now more than ever, um, transparency is super important. I feel like we have a responsibility as bakers to inform, you know, what are you using? Where are you getting it from? How are you supporting your community? Um, and kind of building each other up. That is what I think is most important. I like to collaborate also with other makers like myself, you know, whether it be a florist or an almond milk maker or, uh, you know, cultured butter or whatever it is connect to the community and create that sense because, you know, I honestly can't remember or know like who, who is your baker? Who are they? What are they about? Um, and so that's kind of where I am on it. <laughs> yeah. I think that one of, one of the things that's so amazing about whole grains, um, you know, which you just spoke to is, is the way that um, it kind of deepens the relationships that, uh, that we have all up and down the food chain. And um, I, I, I completely agree with you and uh, really respect your perspective on, on transparency and wanting to, you know, convey to your customers, you know, as much information as possible so they can make informed decisions. Um, and um, what are, um, so we talked yesterday a little bit about uh, an einkorn bread. Do you do oh, an yeah. bread? Yeah. You know, it's my big day. And of course, yeah. I have any einkorns in there, but I have my family loaf. That's actually. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's called, it's called your family loaf. Yeah, I call it the family loaf because the family gets it, but yes, nice. I, do, I do have a half eaten einkorn and actually a, well, a whole stack of fresh milk cookies. Oh yeah. Wait, hold that up a little more. We need to see more. Yes. Wait, you see salt on there. Yes. Premium chocolate. Can yeah. I have that, please? Of course. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. um, and so tell tell us about that. What's in that? Um, so I use a blend of let's see. I have 
spelt flour that I got from Janie's Mill, I use a uh, soft white wheat berry um, that I mill in-house and just an organic pastry uh, flour that I also got from Janie's Mill. Um, and I kind of just blend it together and, um, you know, I sourced my butter and my chocolate and everything. And, you know, at the end of the day, like we had said before, you know, this is, it's a chocolate chip cookie, but why not have a fresh milled chocolate chip cookie? Why not put the best ingredients for it? If you're going to indulge, have the best. And I say that with bread too. I think, you know, we shop for organic coffee and wine and produce and whatnot. Like why not put that effort into bread? It is, you know, an experience and people connect with it. So that's why I think it's super important to, you know, get people to really know about these grains acts, you know, ask the questions and empower them to do their own research. So. And yeah. what, are some, what are some of the things that you um, appreciate or notice about using the whole grains in that cookie recipe versus using, um, you know, all purpose flour or something that, you know, is more uh, stripped of identity and nutrition. Uh, right. And same with sugar. Um, <laughs> no, I really love the whole, I was more excited to get my mock mill than I was my Rothko. I mean, it's a very close considering the weight for the beloved Rothko, but Maybe tell, tell folks a little bit what, what both of those things are just for folks who might not know. So the mock mill 200 is the, um, it's a grain mill that I have that just mills fresh flour. It's the size of a Vitamix. It costs less than a Vitamix. Um, and it, you know, gives me that I can take the wheat berry and basically blend it up and mill it down, if you will, and um, use it for my bread. And I like to do it, you know, all same day. I don't like to do anything well for now. Um, and then the Rothko right there, that handy oven that has a four month waiting list, um, the electric convection deck with its quirks. I think there's a whole Rothko community because we're all trying to figure out how to work it sometimes because it's, it's, uh, it's very inconsistent, <laughs> but it's awesome. Um, yeah. So those are my favorite tools, but like I said, it, you know, blending up, uh, all of these different wheats and kind of learning about it. And I've had so many fails, but just being able to work with it and feel it and use my intuition, um, and experiment with new things. I'm all about, you know, shopping at farms and, you know, what can enhance my gut biome. Um, and I think that's important using different wheats and where the soils, you know, where they at, and how are the farms doing it and increasing that. So. Can you hear me? Oh, who's, I think someone just, Oopsie. whoever you were, we could hear you, but <laughs> please, please hold. <laughs> um, and so, okay, so we got those incredible chocolate chip cookies, fresh milled chocolate chip cookies, which, which I'm sure taste as, as delicious as they look. And then your family loaf, there you go. which is, that's just 100% einkorn right there? No, oh, it's actually a 50-50. So I use a um, Central Millings High Mountain, the um, high protein flour, and I mix that with 50% um, einkorn. Yep. So I basically just do my normal run um, of, you know, stretch and folds and fermentation, and then toss it in my Campbell Rackmaster lovely bread tins and bake away. But yeah, and I also have, I just started doing a, um, a lighter loaf with um, sesame. I can grab it for today's bake. Yeah, great. Nice and hot, actually. But you can yes. see. Yes, beautiful. And so what's it, what are the flowers in there? This is actually a mix. It's, um, so my, I use like a stiff starter. It's a pumpernickel rye. Um, but I use a blend of ABC, Central Milling, um, High Mountain, and um, Pumpernickel Rye in there. So it always gives it a nice little like sour flavor. And then I load toasted sesame, pre-toasted sesame seeds on top because I like a double toast. So, yeah. <laughs> double toast. Patented maneuver. <laughs> really makes a difference. I want a sesame bite in every, every single bite. <laughs> Um, so we got a couple questions here from from participants. Uh, the Ledetsky family is wondering, what are the name of the bread tins that you just mentioned? Um, Campbell, I believe it's Rackmaster. He is on Instagram. If you look up, I, I'm sure he has a ton of tags. Uh, let me grab it. It's these 
Pullman tins, and they come with lids too, which are amazing. They, um, you can actually fit eight, uh, 24 in the Rothko. So you can do a two dozen bake, which is amazing um, because I was using my home oven for a long time and that took me a long time. <laughs> so. um, and uh, someone is wondering, do you, uh, Omar Wally is wondering, do you publish your recipes? I don't live in the US and would love to try your cookies. They look incredible. I second that. Yay. Um, I'm happy to share my recipes with anybody and everybody. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram right now. Um, and I'll get, I get back to everybody. So and what's, that? what's your Instagram handle? It's at James Jim. And again, my name is not Jane because I get this all the time. My last name is James J A N is in Nancy E S baking co. Um, so yeah. Very cool. And if people are interested in actually trying uh, any of your delicious baked goods, how, how would they go about doing that? So right now I have deliveries all in North County, San Diego. Um, I have also pickup options. I'm in Carlsbad, uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, and, um, I post every week a new menu. I try to find whatever, um, I can at, and use different recipes or inclusions, um, for specialty loaves during the week. It just depends on what I find from the farm. So it really, there is no rhyme or reason. It's um, how, as fresh as I can get it and as best as I can get it. Sometimes there are weeks without the same thing. Sometimes there are, but I try to stay consistently inconsistent and consistent in quality, but inconsistent in variety. So you kind of get what you get <laughs> in the nicest way. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, and that's understandable given, I mean, you do this all yourself, right? Sure do, yes, yeah. with two kids full time. <laughs> My goodness, that's a Herculean task. Um, well, thank you so much. We just got one minute left. Is there anything else that you'd love to share or make requests of anyone uh, who's with us here? You know, I just have to say, I'm super, for not being in this industry and being super new to it, Everybody I have ever encountered has been so awesome about sharing. Um, I feel like I only want to pay it forward and, um, you know, not to be afraid if you're thinking about it, just go for it. Just do it. Do what, you know, follow whatever passion you have. My passion is connecting people with good food that's healthy for you. Um, those are the things that drive me. I know that anybody can literally go out to the grocery store down the, down the street and get a loaf of bread, but they choose to buy from me. And that really means a lot. So um, really putting my name behind my product, um, quality is super important. So yeah, that's pretty much all I, all I got for you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alina. Really appreciate it. And uh, good luck with the, the rest of your bake. And um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks so yeah. much. Bye. Bye-bye.